Hi there. We're going to solve this fun triangle area problem from the 1990 Math Counts competition. We're given a triangle with vertices A, B, C. Vertex A is at the point 0, 15 on the Y axis. B is at the origin, 0, 0. And vertex C is on the X axis at the point 10, 0. The problem is... We can imagine some point, say, D, on this side of the triangle, AC. Now, wherever we put this point, D, certainly, if we draw the segment from B to D, that will split the big triangle into two smaller triangles. Now, we want to find where we have to place D on this side so that the two smaller triangles have exactly the same area. That's what's asked of us here. Find the coordinates of D, some point on AC, so that the area of triangle ABD, that's what that square bracket notation means, is area. So that area equals the area of triangle DBC. We're going to solve this problem in two ways, the first way using a system of equations and the second way using a more slick geometrical approach. For the first solution, if we want to solve the problem using a system of equations, how many equations are we going to need? Well, we have two unknowns, the coordinates of the point D, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. So to solve for two unknowns, we're going to need two equations. For our first equation, of course, we've got to find two things that equal each other. And in this problem, an obvious choice would be the areas of these two triangles. The whole point of the problem is those areas have to equal each other. So let's see if we can write the areas of those triangles in terms of x and y and set them equal to each other. Let's first focus on the area of triangle ABD. The area of a triangle, of course, is one-half base times height, so we can start off with that one-half. Then we have to multiply it by the base. What should we pick as the base of this triangle? Well, the side we immediately know the length of would be this one here, AB. So let's let that side be the base. AB just goes from a y-coordinate of 0 to a y-coordinate of 15. Its x-coordinate doesn't change. So this segment has a length of 15. And that's going to be the base length of our triangle. To finish calculating the area, we just need to multiply by the height. Now if this is the base of the triangle, by definition, the height is the distance from that base to the opposite vertex. Sorry, I accidentally erased those parentheses. So the height is the distance from this base to the opposite vertex D, and that looks like that. You may notice this height, the distance from the base to D, is actually just the x-coordinate of the point D. So our height is x, and that's our area, one-half times the base, which has a length of 15, times the height, which is just the x-coordinate of the point D. Since the base lies on the y-axis, the distance to D is just its x-coordinate. Really nice. So, now we just have to set this equal to the area of the other triangle. Let me just erase this. And the other triangle has an area we can calculate similarly. Its area is one-half base times height. Let's say we pick BC to be the base of the triangle. The length of BC is just 10, since it goes from an x-coordinate of 0 to an x-coordinate of 10. So that's one-half times the base of 10. And what is its height? Well, if BC is the base, then the height is just the distance from that base to the opposite vertex. The opposite vertex is D, so that height looks something like that. And you may notice, since this base lies entirely on the x-axis, the distance to the opposite vertex is just the y-coordinate of D. So this works great, we've got x and y involved in this equation.
Now let's just do some simplification. So again, these are the areas of our two triangles that we insist on being equal. These areas have to be the same, so we've set them equal to each other. Now we'll simplify. 1 half times 15 is just 7.5, so on the left we have 7.5x. On the right we have 1 half times 10, and so that's just going to be 5y. All right. I'll just change the color of this equation. I'll make it a nice red so it stands out and shrink it a little bit and set it off to the side. Now we're going to need a second equation so that we can solve for our two unknowns. For our second equation, notice that together the two little triangles make up the big triangle. And so certainly if we add the areas of the smaller triangles, we will get the area of the big triangle. That's what we're going to use for our second equation. So we just have to write the sum of the areas of the two triangles. We just calculated the areas of the two triangles, so that's really easy. We have 7.5x plus 5y. That's the sum of the areas of the two little triangles, and those areas together must equal the area of the big triangle. The area of the big triangle is just one-half base times height. Let's say BC is the base of our big triangle. The length of BC, as we said earlier, is just 10 since it goes from an x-coordinate of 0 to an x-coordinate of 10 and it doesn't move in the y direction. And then we just have to multiply by the height. What is the height of this big triangle? Well, this side lies on the x-axis and this side lies on the y-axis. So this is actually a right triangle. Thus, the height is going to be given by this perpendicular side. It's perpendicular to the base and so its length is the height. And its length, as we said earlier, is just 15. So the height is 15. Now we can just do some simplification. We've got 7.5x plus 5y equals 1 half times 10 is 5, and 5 times 15 is 75. And there is a second equation that we've got by noticing that the sum of the areas of the little triangles has to equal the area of the big triangle. Again, I'll change the color of this equation to a nice red, shrink it a little bit, and now that we have two equations, we can use them both to solve for the coordinates of D. To solve this system of equations, notice that in the second equation, we have 7.5x. And from the first equation, we know that 7.5x equals 5y. So let's replace 7.5x with 5y. That's going to give us that 5y plus another 5y is equal to 75. 5y plus 5y is 10y. Then we would divide everything by 10, and that would tell us that y is equal to 7.5. Now that we know what y is, we can plug it into the first equation to finish solving for x. That's going to give us that 7.5x equals 5 times y, and we know that y is 7.5. And hey, this works really nicely. We've got a factor of 7.5 on both sides, so we can just cancel those out. And that gives us that x equals and now we've got the coordinates of D. So where does D have to be on AC so that the areas of these two triangles are equal? D has to have an x-coordinate of 5 and a y-coordinate of 7.5. And that's the answer. Let's move on to the second solution. For the second solution, let's think with a little bit of intuition. If we imagine the point D moving along the side AC, along all of the points it could possibly be at, we might think that putting it halfway between A and C would be a reasonable choice that is likely to give us two triangles that have the same area. But how could we be sure that will work? Well, let's again think about the areas of these triangles. We know that the area of a triangle depends on the base and the height. With our two little triangles, suppose we say the base of this one is the side AD, 
and let's say the base of this one is the side DC. If those are the bases, then clearly they lie on the same line. Again, the area is determined by base and height. Now, what about the heights of these triangles? If this is the base of this one, and this is the base of this one. Well, the height is the distance from the base to the opposite vertex. So if we look at this triangle, its height would be this distance looks something like that. That's the distance from the line that contains the base to the opposite vertex. Again, that's the height of that guy. Now, what about this triangle over here? Well, again, its height is the distance from the base to the opposite vertex, uh, but we see that's precisely the same height as the other triangle. If we treat these as the bases, the two triangles have exactly the same height because their bases lie on the same line and the opposite vertex is the same. Both of them have an opposite vertex of B. So then the only thing that could possibly make their areas different, since their heights are the same, would be their bases. And so for their bases to be the same, we need to place D at the midpoint of AC. Again, we know their heights are the same, so if we place D at the midpoint of AC, then by definition of midpoint, these bases will also be the same, and so their areas will have to be the same as well, since the area of a triangle just depends on the base and the height. And there's the reasoning written out for you. Since the heights of triangle ABD and DBC are the same, their bases AD and DC must be equal in order for them to have the same area. And so D has to be the midpoint of AC. So to finish the problem, to find the coordinates of the point D, we just need to use the midpoint formula. The coordinates of D will be, well, the X coordinate will be the average of the X coordinates of A and C. So that's going to be zero plus 10 divided by two. And the Y coordinate of D will be the average of the Y coordinates of A and C. So 15 plus zero divided by two. And as we saw in the previous solution, this comes up to an X coordinate of five and a Y coordinate of 15 over two, which is 7.5. So those are the coordinates of D. So there are two fun solutions to this problem. Let me know in the comments which one you liked more, and be sure to share this video if you'd like to see more problems like this one. See you next time. So much for me, there's nothing here to hold on to, do I want to, you turn into everything, keep tomorrow on your wings, but everyone else just looks at you.